Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, from, good afternoon, everyone from India, and good evening to everyone joining the webinar from Japan. So thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Swapnil Chaurasia, and uh, I'm today's facilitator. I'm a master's student at the Department of Civil Engineering in University of Tokyo. So today's webinar is about study and work in Japan. And it turns out it is the final webinar in the series of webinar being organized by uh, University of Tokyo India office and uh, Max. So uh, the study and work in Japan aims to promote education in Japan by motivating young students to choose Japan as a preferred destination for their future studies. A series of webinar, as I already mentioned, is being organized under this program in which we will have presentation from different universities and academies who will be detailing about the various education programs being offered. So Japan, even after being the third largest economy with the highest employment rate among the developed nations is not a very popular country for higher education. Uh, this is mainly due to lack of information and various misconceptions like Japanese language requirements, living costs, lifestyles, job prospects, etc. So during the webinar, most of these questions will be answered. And if you have any further questions, please write them down in uh, the Q&A portal. Okay, uh, so today's webinar is scheduled for two hours. Uh, we will first have the introduction by Mr. Miyauchi, director, the University of Tokyo India office, followed by the presentation on overview of study and work in Japan by Mr. Dhirat Joshi. Uh, we will then have presentations by the representatives of three, uh, of three academies, uh, first by Tokyo International University, then by Aiki University of Hiroshima and uh, by Hiroshima Global Academy. Today we will also have a special presentation by the Embassy of Japan. Uh, and finally, we'll have the presentation by uh, uh, the representative of Japan Science and Technology Agency. Okay, uh, so each university and academy will have 20 minutes for the presentation, which will be followed by a five minutes of Q&A session. So without any further delay, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Miyauchi to please uh, give his introduction. Thank you for Mr. Spaniel. And uh, dear student parents in seven countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and uh, Maldives. My name is Yasuki Miyauchi the director, University of Tokyo, India. Today we present you study and work in Japan. This program is sponsored by MEX, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. Our mission is to introduce Japanese university and assist you to study and work in Japan. This project started from last October to today. In total of our 12 session, we introduce you nearly 30 major universities in Japan, public, private, and national universities, both graduate and undergraduate schools. All uh, schools we introduced during the session, they have some English medium program. You, know, you can, can get degree on your own English. After the uh, graduation, you can get a job. So you can get a uh, good chance in Japan. Yes, and then um, uh, today we introduce you uh, three major universities and uh, DST, and then also uh, we invite you the uh, special guest from Embassy of Japan, past secretary, Mr. Yonehara. He'll give you the uh, scholarship information, next scholarship, the uh, most famous, very long uh, scholarship in Japan. The official announcement will be uh, sometime in uh, April, April, middle of April. Now well, today, the information is very limited, but it is better for you to get out trying of next scholarship. The uh, each university session, uh, the uh, presentation is only 20 minutes. Therefore, you think you're not enough. In such case, please contact university directly, you can get good information from them. Thank you. I believe this program will help you. And it is my great pleasure 
if you consider Japan as you are one of your future options. Yeah, please enjoy today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyochi, for your kind words. And I'm sure that your words will encourage and motivate uh, the students and their parents to consider Japan as a preferred destination for future studies. So next, uh, uh, I will first share my screen. Uh, next, we have the presentation uh, by Mr. Dheeraj on overview of study and work in Japan. Uh, so please, Mr. Dheeraj, please. Yeah, uh, Sobnal, can you please stop sharing? Thank you. Is my screen visible, Swapna? Yes, uh, it is fine. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Dhiraj Joshi. I am master student at the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Tokyo. I am basically from India. And uh, I have been working for the Ministry of Railways in India. And uh, I have been offered a very good prospect for of, uh, uh, continuing my education in master's for regarding the high-speed railways in India. Okay. So as we can see, Japan has 47 prefectures, which can be equated to states in Asian countries. Japanese economy is basically third largest in the world, and Japan is a member of G7 countries. Japanese economy is propelled by automobile and consumer electronics industries. And as per Global Peace Index, uh, Japan is a very safe place to live with, with a very low crime rate, and is reckoned as a country to live with peace of mind, especially for international students by providing them a comfortable living environment again after leaving their home country. Uh, bullet train or Shinkansen, uh, as they are popularly called here in Japan, are a technological marvel. And not only Shinkansen, other transportation modes are very comfortable and they are always punctual. Japan provides excellent international cuisine options like Indian, Chinese, European. Uh, the main concern of students and the parents regarding the health of their child uh, is also taken care of by their national health insurance scheme, uh, which takes care of such apprehension by catering to 70% of the medical expenses, uh, which is paid by the government in lieu of the annual nominal premium of, of annual, uh, around 12,000 yen only. Uh, Japan is a country which offers modern cityscape coexisting with ancient culture heritage. Uh, as we can see, Japan university system can be divided into basically three categories, national, public, and private. Uh, national are founded by the Japanese government. Public are basically led by local public entities, uh, that is by prefecture governments, and private, which is based on the legacy of the founders. And... Uh, the other concern of the students is basically related to the openness of the Japan to English speaking students, which is taken care of after understanding their diverse and comprehensive coursework, which is offered in English, wherein as much as 90 undergraduate courses in 40 universities are offered in English and 160 postgraduate courses in 51 universities are offered in English. The facilities offered to the students is unparalleled and the best in the world. Sophisticated libraries offer excellent collection of books, journals, digital resources like e-journals and e-books. Research labs are also unique in nature, wherein students learn uh, practical skills through engineered approach and positive feedback on constant basis from lab members and also from professors. Student lounges allows for active interaction for creation of new ideas and their implementation. University offers excellent facilities for sports enthusiasts, including well-furnished gymnasium. University dormitories offer peaceful living environment for well-balanced academic and personal lifestyle. So the admission to the Japanese universities, uh, basically there are apprehensions regarding financial assistance and financial assistance is provided by universities and Japanese government in the form of generous scholarship like Max. Just so local government scholarships, local international associations and private foundation and university scholarships. Uh, this is the link and I will be posting in the chat box later on for uh, your kind information. Uh, basically the tuition fees and living expenses in Japan, I have compared here 
and uh, relatively to Indian rupees uh, per year. Uh, Japan is uh, like I have compared here with US, uh, how is the education system there and reserve is Japan. Uh, it is five times cheaper, the tuition fees here in Japan as compared to US and in public universities and in private universities, it is three times cheaper in Japan. And living expenses, you can assume that you are getting the same facilities as in US at the same expenses. And the average salary, the most of you might must be having some apprehension regarding what are the job opportunities in Japan. Uh, Japan has the lowest unemployment rate as per Statista 2020. And uh, the average salary you can expect is around 3.9 million yen per year, which corresponds to around 28 lakhs per year, uh, rupees. And the leading international Japanese companies include Canon, Toyota, Panasonic, Sony, Honda, and Sibushi. And there are other global companies operating in Japan, like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Bosch, Deloitte, Apple. And this offers an exciting internship, part-time job, and long-term uh, employment opportunities for the students. And uh, the other key aspect here is the visa procurement process is very easy because the students after graduation can upgrade their student visa to working visa in Japan due to the adoption of point-based system here in Japan for highly skilled foreign professionals. So why should we consider Japan? Basically, it offers high level of education in English. Uh, Japan is a world leader in science and technology. Uh, there are low tuition fees in universities and colleges, generous scholarship from government and other institutions, uh, more Japanese companies to recruit international students. Besides, uh, the key aspect that I'm focusing here is uh, there are many Japanese uh, companies which are now uh, in Southeast Asian countries and Southwest Asia because Japanese government is providing ODA, official development assistance for the development of the infrastructure in those countries. And this factor has created a demand for a diverse and multicultural workforce in such Japanese companies. So they can also work in their home country also by serving as a global citizen to both Japan and their home country. So this is uh, just I'm sharing my life here in Japan. I had a great learning experience in Japan as this sojourn has offered me not only uh, pursuing my personal interest, uh, uh, like I have joined karate club here, and uh, cultural activities like calligraphy and uh, shodo, which is called here. And I was lucky to take part in their traditional ceremonies of rice pounding called Omochisuki, and also see a live sumo match. Uh, there are various international student associations in the university, and I'm also an executive member of such association called UTSA, uh, wherein we celebrate uh, cultural festivals like Diwali, and also take some time out for celebrating together with everyone. Uh, traditional delicacies like samosa, which everyone knows in India, and uh, we have a great time here. And uh, I wish all young students all the best, and I'm eagerly looking forward to meet some of you very soon. Uh, now I've uh, just uh, finished here and hand over to Mr. Sopnil. Thank you very much, Mr. Dhiraj, for such a comprehensive presentation. Uh, you have really summarized uh, this whole series of webinar in just a small presentation of five minutes, in which you have tackled so many crucial pieces of uh, uh, so many crucial uh, important aspects of a student's life, and also given so many critical pieces of information, uh, especially like uh, the information which are not generally discussed, like the visa transition from student life to work life. That is a, a very big factor in most of the developed economies, and it's very uh, very simple in Japan. Uh, so thank you for providing so many crucial pieces of information and uh, such a comprehensive presentation. So next, uh, now we move on uh, to the presentation by the universities and academies. Our first presentation is uh, by Tokyo International um, University. So I will first share the screen. Okay, uh, so Tokyo International University is a private university, uh, which is uh, known for its research-oriented liberal arts studies and is regarded as one of the most international uh, institutions of higher learning in Japan. TIU developed a very unique English-based undergraduate degree, providing majors in business economics and international relations in 2014 called English Track Program. Uh, the, and the international student body has since grown to roughly 1,200 students from over 60 countries. Uh, 
So from Tokyo International University, we are joined by Mr. Benjamin Serbrooks, admission advisor, and Ms. Shreya, who is a current uh, student at uh, the university. So I would hand over the mic to Mr. Sir, uh, Benjamin. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to talk about Tokyo International University today, but I first wanted to um, let one of our current students, Ms. Shreya, uh, just introduce herself really quickly. She'll let you know, um, you know where she's from, what she's studying, what year. Shreya, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Ben. Hi, everyone. My name is Shreya and I'm from Delhi. I'm currently a second year student at PIU and uh, the major that I'm pursuing here is Bachelor of Science in Digital Business and Innovation, in which Ben will probably talk about in detail in her presentation. Yeah, thank you so much, Shreya. So if anyone has any questions for either me or Shreya, uh, feel free to put them in the question box, the Q&A box there. Shreya can talk about student life. Uh, both of us are living in Japan as a kind of international residents. I'm originally from the US. So if you do have any questions about that, please feel free to put them there. Also, before I get started, I just wanted to um, let everyone know we're here talking about our undergraduate program today, so our bachelor's program. If you do have questions about graduate or postgraduate degrees, so master's or PhD, I'm going to send a link to our graduate program website, as well as the email address of our graduate admissions team, though they're both in the chat right now. So if you do have any questions about that, we unfortunately uh, will not be able to answer those today. So please reach out to our graduate admissions team. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the presentation. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, let's get started on this. And I'll throw it over to Shreya a couple of times during the presentation. But yes, I'm here to talk about Tokyo International University. Um, Tokyo International University was founded in 1965. However, English track program began just uh, six years ago now in 2015. We're located in the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, about a 35 minute train ride from Tokyo. So you have really easy access to Tokyo, but you're able to kind of focus on your studies because you're slightly removed right from the really bustling city center. Um, and that also helps make it a much more affordable option for students to live in. As mentioned, we have 1,300 international students from 68 different countries around the world, and we're actually hoping to increase that to around 3,000 international students in the next few years here. We want to have about half of our student body be international students. Um, on top of that, our faculty as well is 65% international, so 65% of our professors come from outside of Japan which we think is great because it really helps give you not only a diverse perspective in the classroom, right, with the many uh, different nationalities in the classroom, but also from your professors as well. And uh, as was said before in our introduction, we do pride ourselves on being one of the most international universities in Japan. Times Higher Education ranked us fifth within Japan, and the Toyo Keizai Magazine, magazine ranked us as the second most international university in Japan and the 10th uh, just overall private university in Japan. So we're really proud of those rankings. And another quick thing we like to mention for students who are uh, hoping to study with us soon is that we're opening up a brand new campus for our in English track program in the heart of Tokyo in 2023. So for any of you looking to apply this year, this will be part of your university experience is getting to kind of experience that city center of Tokyo. And we think Tokyo is a great place to study uh, just for students. You know, it was ranked number two by the QS as uh, the QS ranking for best student cities in the world. But I'm gonna uh, just let Shreya talk a little about why she thinks Tokyo is a great place to study uh, for students. Well, thank you, Ben. So even I, I, like, I never considered Tokyo to be, uh, I never knew that st studying in Tokyo, like Tokyo can be a great student or, uh, option for students. But when I came here, I realized that first of all, the safety, it is literally very safe. You can, you know, walk on the streets at middle of the night and uh, it's always so safe. People are so gentle. They are so kind. And uh, second part is that you literally have uh, you know, I call Japan as a land of opportunities. So in from experiences to job opportunities to just explore different kinds of fields, it is so, you know, you, you get myriad experiences. So, you know, if you want to go to restaurants or if you just want to walk in parks. So it's like um, you get to work and enjoy at the same time. It has so many different things. So I think that is why... Uh, well, and of course, the location of university, it's, you know, in, since it's the outskirts, so you really get to enjoy both 
uh, the nature and the city life both at the same time. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Shreya. Yeah, I think as somebody who also did study abroad in Tokyo, uh, you know, not too long ago when I was a student, I think it's a really surprisingly affordable city for students as well. So moving along here, we just want to talk a little bit about our actual English track program, of course. Now, as mentioned before, all of the programs that are being mentioned today are taught in English, um, but we are a four year program with some early graduation options for high achieving students and we have three majors. We offer a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations, a Bachelor of Science in Digital Business and Innovation, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we offer a Bachelor of Arts in Business Economics. Now, Business Economics is kind of one of your more traditional business degrees. We have five focus areas that students can really hone their skills in, you know, pick one to really excel at, things like management, marketing, finance. And this major is really great because professors really focus on teaching our students practical skills that they can use in the workplace um, once they've left university, because that is, you know, the whole point of attending university, right? You wanna gain some of those skills. Our newest major is the Bachelor of Science in Digital Business and Innovation. Now this major looks at the intersection of the business world and things like technology, IT, artificial intelligence. There are six focus areas within this major. Uh, so students can really kind of uh, again, really pick the area that they want to kind of, um, you know, sharpen their teeth in and really learn some skills in that. So if you want to study things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, maybe some coding, you can. If you want to study things like cryptocurrency, things like Bitcoin, right, blockchain technology, that's also an option. Or if you're looking to study more digital marketing or go into things like big data and analytics, uh, which is really in demand right now, we think this is a great major for students, uh, especially if they have more of a science or kind of a math mind, this major is really great for them. And one thing we've done with this major is open up a uh, innovation lab with Tech Mahindra, which is the third largest tech company in India. And we're really, really proud of this. Now, unfortunately, after we opened it, um, the pandemic did come into full effect. So it hadn't been able to make use of its full capabilities. However, this past semester, we did have a career practicum course with Tech Mahindra. So our students could gain kind of real world uh, insight from a company. And Shreya actually took that class. So Shreya, would you mind kind of telling us a little bit about what that class was like? Yes, definitely. So this was actually a special program which just like Ben mentioned, it was a career practicum experience. So you got to work with the company, which was Tech Mahindra. And of course, uh, they have been working, uh, they've been working on their AI labs. So we were actually focused, we, uh, we learned about um, three different, uh, two different kinds of uh, fields like blockchain, like AI and machine learning. And we learned about, first of all, we were given classes from, uh, we were given a lecture by the Tech Mahindra uh, scientists and their researchers who were involved in those labs. And then we were, you know, uh, divided into groups and we were told to, um, analyze those topics about how but we can uh, you know solve a problem with these concepts uh, with blockchain applying the uh, big AI and blockchain how we can apply these concepts to solve the block so to solve problems so with the, with the teamwork and group projects we were given uh, we had to give presentations so it was actually you know we very closely worked with the companies we pitched the, our ideas to the companies and um, you know we we developed our ideas we pitched how we can do that so it was actually you know uh, a kind of program where we were applying our theory and theory and how we can use that in practical so it was very kind of a um, career practicum. So like we were getting ready how we can use our skills. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shrey. Yeah, I think this is one of uh, kind of one of the strengths of these partnerships with these real world companies. I think it really prepares students for the outside world. And I think it's awesome that our students get to participate in something like this. Uh, after this, of course, our final major is international relations, which focuses on kind of way countries interact and study things like, uh, you know, the causes of poverty or international trade or conflict. And this major also has a number of focus areas for students. And while many people think of this major as something like, oh, you know, if you're going to be a diplomat or you want to work for, you know, the United Nations, you should study this major. And that is very true. But we also have many students who go on to uh, work for like multinational corporations or do move into kind of more of a business oriented job. So that is an option for students 
within this major as well. Now, I mentioned that you didn't need to have, uh, that we are an English medium degree and you don't need to have any Japanese knowledge before you come to the university. Um, however, we do require that all students take at least one semester of Japanese just to help them um, in their kind of life in Japan. And if students work hard, they can continue to take Japanese and achieve full fluency by graduation. And I think this is really helpful, especially if students are looking to work in Japan in the future. Uh, now we're just going to talk a little bit about student life. So this is uh, one of the campuses that our university has and where all of the E-Track courses take place. Um, and I just wanted to mention that we have an entire department called the International Exchange Office, the IEO, that is there to support students in their daily life. We know that moving to a new country as an international student can be kind of, uh, you know, scary, a little intimidating. Um, but I think Shreya has some really great things to talk about the staff uh, in the IEO and how they can be helpful. Uh, yes, thank you, Ben. So actually, I think the International Exchange Office, as the name suggests, it is, uh, you know, aimed at helping international students, but also the staff of IEO itself is international. You know, people are from different countries. And because I think that is why they're so, um, you know, IEO is, is like a guide, your guide in TIU, which will guide you from everything from your uh, from your visa assistance to your if you are doing some internship or if you are applying, if you know you your bank account, for example, or your accommodation, uh, anything you can just mail them. And, you know, they're always so supportive. Like, for example, I give an example when I was stuck in India, but there was some problem in my dorm room. So while I was staying in India, they had arranged someone to help me uh, with everything that was in Japan. So, you know, that kind of, so, you know, that kind of support I have never seen somewhere. So, and that is not just limited to IU. I think this is um, the staff of the IU and how supportive they are. I think this is one of the qualities that I think stands, uh, makes the IU stand out. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Shreya. Yeah, I really think that the IEO would do their best to go kind of above and beyond and really make sure students are feeling comfortable. Because again, we know how uh, it's a big deal to move to a new country for university. So we try uh, to put in all the help we can. We also have a number of clubs available for students. We know that, you know, that's a vital part of the university experience for many students and everything from sports like soccer or baseball to things like hip hop dance or orchestra or even uh, Model United Nations, which is a club that was entirely uh, founded by our international students. And they really just took Japan by storm. You know, they came into existence in 2016, 2017. And then since then they have received the most awards at every conference that they have been to. And I think that this just really speaks to the strength of the diversity of our campus because our team is made up of so many different nationalities. They're really able to really succeed um, quite well at the in Model United Nations. Um, and so if you have experience, this is I think a great option for many students. We also have dormitories available, of course, they are fully furnished, they have both single and shared rooms, um, and uh, students can live in them for up to one year, so this is great. We also have some uh, female only dorms if students are interested in that as well. Just really quickly about exchange programs, we do have a sister city or a sister university in the United States called Willamette University. We have some programs with them and then if students do want to study abroad in their time at TAU, that is an option. We have many students that go abroad for a semester. Uh, much has been said about career support as well from our previous wonderful presentation, but we do just want to point out that we do have a full service career center at the university that can do things like, uh, you know, help you with career counseling, resume review, interview prep, you know, they bring you, uh, companies to the campus to give information seminars, they go on a campus career fair every year. And then they can also introduce you directly to companies that are looking to hire international students. So this is a really great option uh, for many of our students. And because of, I think, how successful our career center has been, we've been able to have a 95% job placement rate for our international students who are finding a job prior to graduation. So it's really impressive. And I think it goes to show that if you go to TIU, you will be able to find a good job in the future. Uh, there's also an option for a job hunting visa pan if you graduate and do not have a job yet, um, and you can receive that for up to one year. Students can also work part-time in Japan up to 28 hours per week while classes are in session. And because of the declining population in Japan and the shrinking workforce, there's tons of different part-time job opportunities available. 
and we do have options on campus as well. So now I want to talk a little bit about affordability. Uh, one thing we like to bring up is our tuition reduction scholarships, which are available to all students at our university. They are merit based, so they're based primarily on your uh, GPA, your transcript, your English proficiency, and your statement of purpose that you write to the university. And they come at four levels, 30, 50, 80, and 100% tuition reduction scholarship. Uh, all students are eligible to apply for them. You apply at the same time that you apply for admission, check a little box, write a little paragraph. But even something like a 30% tuition reduction scholarship can save you over $12,000 over the course of your time at TIU. Um, and if you're getting an even higher one than that, it can really help with that. However, even without that, you know, we do just like to point out that tuition in Japan is quite affordable, right? You can see about a third of that of the US and half of that of Australia and Canada and the UK. And the living cost is also it's surprisingly affordable in Japan, particularly in the area around Tokyo International University. Uh, you can see, you know, about half that of the UK and Australia and about three quarters of that of the US and Canada and New Zealand. And so when you put that together, even before a scholarship, we find that you know Japan is quite affordable, less than half that of the US and Australia, um, and about two thirds of that of the UK or Canada. And then when you factor in the fact that you're getting maybe you know $5,000 a year off of that price, you really can see just how affordable Japan can be, um, and TIU in particular, for students who are looking uh, to study abroad. We also have a government scholarship that we like to mention that students apply for once they've enrolled. It provides them with a living stipend for their uh, first six or 12 months, depending on when they enroll. And we have a 99% acceptance rate for this scholarship. So if you apply for it, you're likely to get it. And it's really quite helpful um, for that first year. And then finally, for anyone who is looking to apply to the international relations major and has model United Nations experience in high school, uh, we do have a scholarship available for uh, an enrollment fee waiver for students. So if this is something that applies to you, uh, you might be able to get your enrollment fee waived as well. So we also just like to talk a little bit about our relationship with um, students from South Asia. Um, you know, when our program first started, as you can see, uh, our students primarily came from places like Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand. However, we're now kind of moving our focus to countries in South Asia, so Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and India. And uh, those numbers, students from those countries are growing quite a bit. Um, so not only have we recruited many students, of course, from around the world, but we're getting really high quality students. We just like to talk about how, you know, from Vietnam, 67% of our students are from the top 30 schools and half of our Indonesian students are from the top 100 schools in those countries. So you can see we're recruiting not just a large number of students, but high quality students as well. And because of our work to really build relations in South Asia, we just want, you know, we've invited many different high, uh, top high schools from India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka to come visit our campus and meet with our uh, chancellor of the university. And all of these, you know, uh, principals and counselors and, uh, you know, other representatives from the school have really uh, given quite high reviews to TIU um, during their time. And we see more and more students from these schools coming to TIU. On top of this, we do just like to talk about some of our great professors at our university. One of our honorary professors is um, Ashok Chawla, who is the interpreter for the Indian Prime Minister, uh, the Japanese interpreter for the Indian Prime Minister, and who is an honorary professor at TIU and uh, has given many different talks in Japanese to our students. On top of this, we have a Professor Jay Rajasquera, who is originally from Sri Lanka, currently a US citizen, uh, who is kind of the head of our build business and innovation major. He really helped get that major started. And um, he is the vice president and dean of the graduate uh, school of business and commerce at TIU. And he's quite impressive. He holds the patent for the under uh, underwater fiber optic cable that connects the uh, Europe and the US. And so this is somebody that you'll be able to learn from. We also have uh, Professor Dr. Parag Kulkarni, uh, who is from India, and he actually studied at the India Institute of Technology, and he's been published literally hundreds of times, um, and kind of an expert on machine learning and AI. And so this is, again, somebody whose students will be able to learn directly from. Uh, we also 
have a cafeteria that is vegetarian and halal friendly for any students who are looking for kind of culturally appropriate food. That is something you can get. And also we have many restaurants and even uh, grocery stores, supermarkets in the surrounding area that cater to students who are looking for halal or vegetarian food. And then finally, just to talk a little bit about admissions. Um, we do require that you have a 12-year education system from a recognized country, an international school, or IB or A-levels. We also do accept um, uh, Indian national curriculum uh, schools as well. We do require an English proficiency test, so things like IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, Duolingo. And well, you, as you can see, our minimum score for IELTS is 5.5. Our average score is around 6.5 for accepted students who are getting a scholarship. So uh, of course you wanna get as high as you can on that, especially to help with scholarships. And our screening is primarily online. So you have to submit your transcript, uh, your English proficiency test score, and a statement of purpose as well. And so for this September 2021 intake, we only have two more application periods, one that begins this coming Wednesday and ends in March, and then another one in April uh, for students who are looking to join us for in September 2021. Uh, for students who are applying from Indian curriculum, so CBSE or ICSE, um, the dates for the application are still the same, um, but for things uh, like announcement of scholarships and things like that, we ask that you contact us after you apply as well. And then for April 2022, so next April, um, we will open up our first application period probably in July, another in September, and then another in November, um, but we'll be announcing those dates later. So thank you all so much for listening to me today. Uh, we do have a website that we encourage you all to reach out to or that you all check out because it's got some really great information on there. We also have a YouTube channel. We can watch things like a student-led tour of our campus. Um, and then please feel free to reach out to either our Indian rep office or our general admissions office as well, if you do have any questions. Um, but thank you all so much for listening to me today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the question box. Uh, it does not appear that there's any questions, but if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them now. Um, also, please check out the chat. There is some information, um, at, or there's a link that links directly to our application guidelines. But if there's no questions, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it back over. Oh, here we go. Is there any biochemistry courses uh, for undergrad at TIU? Unfortunately, we do not have any hard science courses. Uh, I apologize for that. But at the moment, yes, we have business economics, international relations, and digital business and innovation. I think that's uh, all about the question that we have received uh, today. I think your presentation is so comprehensive that uh, most of the <laughs> questions that the students can ask are already covered in your presentation and in your dialogue with uh, Ms. Shreya. So thank you for such a unique take on your presentation and uh, it was really nice to listen to the dialogue and getting students perspective uh, while you are giving your presentation. Yeah, thank you so, so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Benjamin, again, for your uh, for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, yes, you too. So thank you. next, uh, we'll be moving on to our next university. Uh, so our next presentation is by AK University of Hiroshima. Uh, it is a public university uh, which is located in the city of Hiroshima, uh, which stands today as the world peace capital. So from uh, AK University of Hiroshima, we are joined by Mr. Matsumoto, uh, manager of the new university establishment preparatory office. So I would hand over the mic to Mr. Matsumoto. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me, Mr. Swapnil. Okay, let me share my screen now.
Okay, uh, good afternoon again to all of the students from uh, seven countries. Hold on a moment. ちょっとあの静かにしてもらっていいですかごめんなさい。ランカーウェン、ラマイラ、ジャパンアタエナワナ、アペー、ビシャビディアレタエナワナ、ホンダータウダーカランドプロワ、エカヒンダ、ビシピアク、バイウェンダ、オンネ、アワシャツネ、エカ、マタカティアガンダ。Excuse my greeting in Singhalese, everyone, because I'm personally pleased to be able to speak in Singhalese after a while. Anyway, let me get back to English language for continuing my presentation. My name is Ryohei Matsumoto from AK University of Hiroshima. Thank you very much for joining this occasion today. It is my pleasure to virtually introduce you our new university, AK University of Hiroshima, which has just been granted an approval for establishment by the Ministry of Education in Japan. We will officially inaugurate this brand new university in Hiroshima in April 2021. AK University will be established as the newest public university by the Prefecture of Government of Hiroshima. The university is established in order to nurture young people like you, who will be our future leaders locally and globally, and who are able to respond to challenges that are not existing in the present world. We will be a small liberal arts college with 100 students per year, including 20 international students. We will have all classes in small classroom settings using active learning methods. As the very first batch of our students, we count on you to create this new university with us. We will have one department and a course, namely social system design, so that you will have knowledge, skills, and competencies to design new social systems in the future. You will be able to choose your major in three areas that are responding to sustainable development goals or SDGs, namely identity design, business design, and ecosystem design. You will be taking humanities related subjects in identity design, social science related subjects in business design, and natural science related subjects in ecosystem design. AK University of Hiroshima is uniquely designed to respond to the, to the needs of a foreseeable future. We will be fully bilingual institution And we welcome international students from all over the world, regardless of their Japanese proficiency. You do not have to be fluent in Japanese to be admitted to take classes for credits, nor to graduate with bachelor's degree in social system design. The curriculum is SDGs oriented and it is complemented with skill building courses such as ICT and design thinking. The curriculum of AK University of Hiroshima will also focus on practical and experiential learning to make you ready for the real world by the time you graduate. We will require students 
to participate in domestic and international practical and experiential courses. You will also have a series of project-based learning or PBL classes, which are offered in partnership with Hiroshima-based companies and organizations. With those classes, we will make our students having these five core competencies before graduating. You shall have foresight, strategic thinking skills with energetic drive. You will also have global collaboration skills and abilities to improve yourselves in lifelong learning. As I explained earlier, our curriculum is uniquely designed, as you see, it is combining liberal arts subjects, basic tools, skill by, uh, sorry, skill building subjects, and a series of practical courses, including internships, PBL exercises, and the degree project you will undertake in your senior year to complete the whole learning experience. You may wonder what practical and experiential learning actually look like. Let's see one example. You will have to get at least four credits of domestic internship or domestic volunteering as a part of your degree requirement. These are practical courses that give you hands-on experiences to work in Japan. We partner with local non-profit organization named Joka Kakesan, actively working uh, in rural and aging town in uh, Aki Ota of Hiroshima. It is about two hours drive from downtown Hiroshima and you'll see such a beautiful nature in mountainous region. The town is shrinking for both aging and migration of young people to larger cities. If you are interested in rural development, or sustainable social support in rural communities, you'll have an opportunity to do a two weeks or more of internship with this organization. You may discuss with the stakeholders for identifying key tasks for you to complete and set personal goals to be accomplished within the period of internship. For example, like the one on the slide, you may undertake mini project to create a virtual tour to attract inbound tourists. You will be expected to proactively look for solutions to address exist, uh, existing real life challenges. If you are a person who is willing to pursue challenges or being equipped with entrepreneurial mi mind, you are most welcome to be one of the founding students of AK University of Hiroshima. We offer affordable tuition for international students, including 50% tuition reduction scholarship from Hiroshima Prefecture that makes about 2,500 US dollars per year. We also offer non, uh, sorry, on-campus dormitory situated in the heart of Hiroshima city for our students. If you wish to obtain Japanese government financial support in your second year and after, our international office will provide full support to do so. As of today, we are in the middle of second window of selection for autumn 2021 entry. As I previously explained in my presentation, we plan to accept maximum 20 international students per year from all over the world. In case there were fewer than 20 international students who are confirmed to enroll in 2021 by the second window of selection, we shall open the third selection window between April and May. Keep on checking our website or JPSS website for updates. Just for your information, 
a few international students from India are applying in the earlier windows, but no one has applied from Sri Lanka yet. Details of the application process, as well as further information related to the selection can be found in our student application guidelines available on our website. We will be looking forward to having new applications in future. And of course, by September or October 2021, we shall start a new round of selection of international students for 2022 autumn enrollment. If you have any questions related to the, the admission, feel free to contact our admission office by email. My presentation for introducing the University of Hiroshima is reaching to an end. I would like to wrap up my presentation here. As most of you may know, Hiroshima is a global iconic city with a strong message against nuclear weapons. For example, we have atomic bomb dome which is one of the World Heritage Sites in Hiroshima. It is getting even more famous in the world that one must visit once in a lifetime and pray for world peace. You will find many more places to visit other than the ones you see on this slide and be benefited to easily access the Hiroshima Shinkansen Station to go anywhere in Japan since we are located in the center of Hiroshima city. AK University of Hiroshima will propose a new model in higher education to the world under global atmosphere with supports by prefectural government. Take part in making history and become game changer in Hiroshima. I would finally like to play a short movie with a message from the governor of Hiroshima. So let me change the shared screen. I'm pleased to extend this message to you. I'm the governor of Hiroshima Prefecture, Hirohiko Yuzaki. I'm so delighted to announce the opening of the new prefectural university, AK University of Hiroshima, in April 2021. One of the exciting features of the new university is its focus on project-based learning. Students will seek solutions to real-world challenges that diverse organizations including private companies and the government are facing. Future society will require you with the ability to pave the way to a new and unpredictable era by creating new value. A mere position of broad knowledge is not going to work. In other words, the university plans to develop students' ability to respond to the needs of a rapidly changing society stemming from globalization, the progress of digital technologies, and social reforms. To develop students' ability to analyze real-world challenges and create new values, students will form small teams and engage in integrated programs from bottleneck identification to the solution designing by exploiting their knowledge and skills acquired through studies of liberal arts and digital technology. Additionally, students will develop global awareness and openness to diversity as well as communication ability through various programs. Those include lectures provided in English and Japanese, studies at universities outside Japan, and internships. The university campus is located in the central part of Hiroshima with good access to all you need for life and learning only a short trip to the Seto Inland Sea and Chugok Mountains where you can enjoy breathtaking views that change with the sea. Since one in every four students will be from outside Japan, I believe that AK University of Hiroshima 
will provide you with unique and unparalleled opportunities to learn from each other. It's my profound hope that AK University of Hiroshima will attract students from around the world who are eager to learn, experience, and challenge to shape the future world. I look forward to seeing you next year on the campus. Thank you very much for watching and listening to my presentation, everyone. Uh, and I also apologize for the uh, shell problem that I uh, had. Thank you very much, Mr. Matsumoto, for your presentation and uh, giving us the information and uh, the message uh, by you know by Hiroshima Governor. It was really nice to listen to the message. Uh, now there uh, there are some questions with the AK University. Would you like to pick them up and answer them verbally? Sure, we'll do. Is TOEFL necessary for AK the study team? Yes, there are uh, about, yes, you will be required to have a certain score in TOEFL, TOEIC, uh, and uh, well, basically it's uh, related to TEFL and uh, all of the students from uh, overseas, I mean, international students will be required TEFL B2 level. Okay, thank you. Uh, would you like to answer the second question as well? Are there, okay, are there biology courses? Biology related courses, right. Uh, unfortunately, we do not offer uh, biology related courses, but uh, in, for example, in the natural science related subjects, we have biodiversity close to the uh, biology but uh, not exactly uh, biology it is okay uh, thank you mr matsumoto i would like to add uh, some of my points uh, from my experience of attending these webinars uh, first of all, to the student that uh, I would like to mention that the kind of uh, uh, separation in different courses that we have in India is quite different from that in Japan. So many students who have studied physics, chemistry, mathematics in India may end up uh, having uh, doing a bachelor's in arts uh, in uh, human resource and technology or environmental engineering. So uh, the, there is a little bit of difference between the education structure between uh, uh, different countries. Uh, so for the students, it is very important for you to understand that uh, uh, the education, uh, uh, you'll have to, uh, you have to see that uh, the name of degree and the name of uh, subjects may be different, but uh, the, you, might, you might find in some other names, uh, the uh, courses that you might be looking for. So thank you very much, Mr. Matsumoto, for your presentation and giving us uh, all the information. Uh, so next, I will share the screen and uh, uh, show where we are currently in the webinar. So our next presentation is by Hiroshima Global Academy. Uh, Hiroshima Global Academy is an international school, and it is the first time that we are hosting an international school in this series of webinar, and it adds a new dimension to our uh, webinar series. So uh, that's a very good uh, knowledge, uh, good and new information for the, the attendees. And Hiroshima Global University is an international uh, school with a unique approach towards education and its internationalization goals. And uh, from Hiroshima Global Univers Academy, we have uh, uh, Mr. Hiroyuki Ono, uh, Vice Principal, uh, who will be giving the presentation from Hiroshima Global Academy. So I would like to hand over the mic to Mr. Hiroyuki. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hiroyuki Ono, Vice Principal of Haiga, Hiroshima Global Academy. Nice to see, see you, everyone. So let us begin our presentation. So could you please take a look at the slide agenda, okay?
So today, I'd like to explain our learning and daily life in this way. And first, I'd like to share our school overview. Then I will explain what is the future of Haiga, Hiroshima Global Academy. At the end of my presentation, I will share our future plan. First, let me explain Haiger's overview. So, Haiger was opened in April 2019 as a school that aims to foster leaders who create in their community a better future for peace and sustainable development in Osagi Kamijima Island in Hiroshima Prefecture. Currently, about 880 students in graduate, seven and eight are living in the boarding house while studying the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program, MYP. From the year 2022, we plan to welcome students from foreign countries and provide them with a unique learning experience that can only be achieved at our school with the IBDP in a diverse environment. I hope you get the overview of our school. So next, let me introduce the feature of Haiga. I'd like to introduce these five features of Haiga. Diverse learning environment, English and Japanese, our curriculum based on IB, learning in Hiroshima, and full boarding system. About diversity. Creating diverse learning environment is one of our vision. We believe diverse learning environment let us develop our global vision rooted in the local community. From high school, we plan to invite 20 foreign students in each grade. Currently, we have made partnership relationships with some organizations for Africa, New Zealand, Mexico, and India. Additionally, we had over 100 legislations from 26 countries in the school information webinar in the last month. Therefore, we believe that our high school from April 2022 will be a diverse learning environment with students from various countries. This is the second feature. I'd like to emphasize is about our language. Classes in Haiga will be held mainly in English. Therefore, English will be a common language in the diverse environment. Our Japanese students have been developing their English skills in English acquisition class and some other subject classes. In this picture, they are learning biology in English with native English teacher. Thus, they are ready to communicate with you in English when overseas students are coming here. Regarding the Japanese, Japanese acquisition class will be a good opportunity to develop their Japanese skills, but also living in Japanese community will help them to develop their communicative in Japanese more. Additionally, students will learn subjects set out in a, the Japanese national curriculum, such as home economics in Japanese to develop their Japanese language skills. We now plan to provide basic Japanese program when overseas students start living here. Next, it's about International Baccalaureate. 
Higer's hope is to make an environment where Japanese students are, foreign students learn and live together. It is this reason that we decided to incorporate the International Baccalaureate, IB, into our school's curriculum. The IB is an educational program aimed at fostering young people to have a spirit of inquiry, creativity, and compassion. We will use this IB framework to develop students to have a sense of agency so that they can contribute to building a more peaceful world through a spirit of understanding and respect for diversity. Recently, we became an IB accredited school for the middle years program, MYP, which is aimed at a junior high students. We are also in the final stages of receiving accredit accreditation for the high school-based diploma program, DP. By the time students graduate from our school, they will have become independent, lifelong learners who are able to conduct research in academic manner and engage others in projects. When they graduate, we expect them to get a Japanese high school diploma as well as IB diploma to go on to the universities in Japan or abroad. Next, it's our learning field, Osaki Kamijima. As you see, Haiga is in an abundant learning environment. The Osaki Kamijima Island gives students access to a local traditional farming culture, as well as a natural environment to explore. In this picture, you can see our students in the internship in the local orange farm. As you can see in the picture, this is a car of Mazda. Hiroshima is one of our learning fields. At our school, we place importance on learning that can only be done in Hiroshima. One of them is a project-based learning program with Mazda, one of the leading auto manufacturers in Japan. This year, students in grade eight designed a muffler for a future car as a collaborative project study with Mazda. Next, this is the fifth feature. Haiga is a boating school, as I told you. Living in a boating community provides valuable life experience that we believe will enforce our vision to graduate students who are knowledgeable, skilled, ethical, and confident in their ability to not only respond to, but lead for change. For a future of sustainability, optimism, and thriving for well-being. In addition to the five features of our school, I'd like to share our school facilities, as well as a holistic, strong, and steady curriculum. Higer also enjoys a setting where the learning is naturally amplified on many levels. The architecture of the purpose-built school echoes our values. Traditional Japanese aesthetics are honored in a modern context. Suddenly, a centrally placed library is vibrant and inviting. The classrooms and the staff room are open to welcoming. Next, let me introduce the student school life. Please take a look at the Haiga's day schedule. The students usually woke, wake up at 6.15 and have morning call at 6.30. After the morning call, they clean the dorm. 
they clean their unit, laundry space, shower and bath. This works on a rotation duty. From seven o'clock, they have breakfast at the cafeteria. The classes start from 8.45 a.m. and finish by 3.45 p.m. After the classes, students have some activities called activities for life. We call these A4L. At that time, they can enjoy Japanese traditional culture. For example, tea ceremony, kimono, and so on. They dine from six o'clock and go to bed at half past 10 after having self-study time and bath. As you see, Higer is a Japanese public school. Therefore, our school year runs from April through to March of the following year. Initially, students will enroll in grade 10 from April to December, where they will study a range of subjects based on the MYP framework. Students will then switch over the GP in January of their grade 10 year finishing the curriculum by October of the following year. Students will then sit their final exams in November. Additionally, students will finish the Japanese National Curriculum, JMC, requirements from December to March of their final year in order to receive both the IB diploma and the Japanese high school graduation certification. So lastly, I'd like to inform you of our future plans. Schedule, depending on the status of coronavirus situation, we will hold our summer school in August. Just planning for students who wish to enter our school. The details, of the admission process for the high school are supposed to be posted on the school website after April. In the current plan, we will hold the selection of students in September or October. Next comes expenses. To consider to our school, it may be necessary to get the information about the cost. Higher is a public international baccalaureate authorized school. Therefore, the annual tuition is 118,800 Japanese yen, which is the same as that of other prefectural schools in Hiroshima. In addition, both parents reside outside of Japan a scholarship equivalent to the tuition will be provided, making it virtually free. The dormitory fee is approximately 444,000 Japanese yen per year, which includes facility usage fees, utilities, internet, etc., and daily meals. Other expenses for study are expected to be about 258,000 Japanese yen per year. So the total of these expenses comes to about 820,800 Japanese yen. This includes the cost of study materials and an aurelium for guest teachers, but does not include the cost of travel for CAS and school trips. If you have any further questions, please feel free to send an email in English or in Japanese to this address. Please know that it may take a week to respond to your inquiries. Thank you very much for your listening. From now, I will answer to your questions if you have. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Ono, for uh, giving us uh, a brief insight into the international uh, opportunities for uh, school education. Uh, we currently do not have any questions uh, because I think um, uh, students might get all the answers <laughs> in the presentation itself. Um, also, I would like to mention that uh, world, uh, in, in the world, Japan is well known for its uh, school education. And it's really great to know about uh, the opportunities for the international students to join a school system in Japan, which, uh, which is known for not only educating in terms of academics, but also the moral and cultural education that it provides. So it's a really good information. And thanks for adding this new dimension to the study and work in Japan webinar series, Mr. Ono. Thank you very much. So, uh, and uh, I would uh, request you to, if you can share the email link uh, in the chat box so that uh, students can save it, uh, the attendees can save it from the chat. Uh, so it will be very helpful. So thank you, Mr. So next we'll be moving forward uh, in our uh, webinar. So I'll share the screen. So now we have completed the presentation by Hiroshima Global uh, Academy, that is HIGA. So uh, now we have the pre a special presentation uh, by the Embassy of Japan. And I'm really thankful that Embassy of Japan has taken interest in our series of webinar and uh, are giving the presentation today. So I would like to invite Mr. Yonehara, First Secretary, uh, Embassy of Japan, India, uh, to please uh, take over the proceedings. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Yonehara. I'm Yasuo Nehara, uh, our first secretary uh, with the Embassy of Japan in India. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, thank you for your interest in studying in Japan uh, today. And uh, uh, I appreciate the members of the University of Tokyo uh, for their uh, continuous efforts to increase people who are interested in studying in Japan, including, uh, including this meeting. I am mainly in charge of you know, people to people exchange issues between Japan and India and the Japanese language education. Okay, so I will share my presentation. Okay. And uh, first, uh, today's my presentation is about the recruitment of next scholarship in India. Uh, uh, so uh, the way of recruitment is different from countries. Uh, so I'm sorry, other countries uh, participants uh, finally need to ask to their country's embassy. But uh, I'm sure uh, my presentation is useful for those, uh, for those participants as they are referenced. Okay, let's start my presentation. And first, uh, about uh, mixed scholarship. And do you know mixed means? Mixed means uh, Ministry of Education, and Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm from uh, mixed. And the purpose of this scholarship is to raise the level of education uh, in Japan and other countries of the world and uh, to contribute to uh, the promotion of mutual understanding and the international cooperation. Um, this next scholarship uh, started from uh, 1954 uh, until now from uh, about 160 countries over uh, approximately 112,000 people studied in Japan by this scholarship. The scholarship is very uh, substantial, so all education fee, uh, traveling expenses, all ones are paid by MEXT. Um, I'll explain uh, about the outline of uh, these programs. There are uh, seven programs in MEXT scholarship, but three of them are uh, not open recruitment. So today, uh, I will explain about four programs. And first, research is to study and research in master course and doctor, doctor course or non-regular course in Japanese university. 
And next, uh, undergrad, undergraduate is a program for those who want to study in undergraduate of Japanese university. But uh, students uh, can study in around 80 national university only. And they can choose private university or public university. Uh, uh, next, uh, uh, College of Technology and Specialized Training College are program, uh, programs for those who want to study in each types of school. And next, about research. Uh, there are two types of programs, uh, embassy recommended and uh, university recommended. Uh, university, university recommended. University recommended uh, recruitment is different from universities. So please check the website of universities you want to enroll with. And the following explanation, explanation is basically about the recommendation of the embassy. An embassy can recommend uh, until outdated number. Uh, in India, uh, we can recommend about from 30 to 36 candidates in recent year. India has more than other, more than, uh, other countries. This means that the Japanese government uh, attaches great importance to India. Uh, the embassy uh, conducts first screening uh, and, uh, and then uh, recommend uh, past candidates, past candidates. Though who makes, makes conduct uh, final screening, most of recommended uh, candidates are successful finally, uh, if you can find the department and the uh, supervisor uh, that are willing to receive them. Therefore, first, first screening and first screening and finding the adequate department and supervisor are most important to success. Next, I will explain about schedule. Recruitment will be held from middle of April to middle of May. During this time, the applicant submit their application for first screening to the embassy. After that, uh, the embassy conducts document screening. In this screening, uh, many university professors examine and uh, evaluate on the basis of research plan, and, uh, candidate, uh, applicants' research plan, and uh, any uh, achievement, uh, academic record, or thesis, uh, or papers, uh, etc. And then uh, at the end of June, we we'll write, write uh, written test and uh, uh, interview are conducted. Written test is English and Japanese. English is one hour. Japanese uh, is two uh, uh, is two hours. Africans passing uh, writing test uh, can take uh, the interview. Interview uh, this interview is conducted uh, for around fifteen minutes. And uh, at the end of August, applicants are informed of the result of first screening. After that, from September to October, candidates who pass the first screening apply to the university of their, uh, of the, of their choice. Uh, and they look for a university that accepts them. And finally, uh, on between de December and uh, next January, the result of second screening is informed to candidates. And those are process and the schedule. And next, I'd like to offer more information and advice. Uh, first, uh, uh, in, in India, uh, we will recruit from 20 fields. In the document screening, we ask experts to examine each field. Um, each field. Um, last year, uh, there were over uh, 2,000 appli applications uh, uh, we have, we had. Uh, but uh, two years ago, oh, about uh, 1,200 applica applications. And three years ago, oh, about uh, 700. Uh, so in, in recent years, uh, the number of applic uh, applications 
has been increasing, increasing, and the selection is becoming more and more competitive. Uh, about, document uh, about document screening, uh, usually uh, about uh, 200 applicants pass. Uh, in document screening, research plan is most important. Do you know uh, what kind of research plan is good? Um, the research it must be uh, of high quality and fulfills the originality, feasibility, relevance of re research and studies the significance of co conducting research in Japan and the possibility of contribu contributing uh, to society. It's not enough uh, if you just want to study uh, something like, um, like this uh, in Japan. And uh, we wish to choose uh, the person who, who seriously wants to study in Japan. If someone withdraws after passing the screening stage, then it deprives someone else's opportunities. However, uh, there were several candidates who declined every year. And uh, uh, so uh, we feel, we felt so very sad uh, every time. And uh, if you want to know more, uh, please check the last year's guidelines in detail. Uh, available on the embassy's website as a reference. But finally, uh, you, mu uh, you must confirm this year's guidance and the uh, embassy's website to be posted in mid-April because the way of recruitment may change. And, uh, and then uh, applicants need to find the university department and supervisor to apply this is very important. Uh, there are many universities in Japan, but you shouldn't choose uh, by university's name. And please try to find the best supervisors for your research. And uh, please understand it is difficult uh, to, for famous universities and the professors to receive many stu uh, too many students. Last year, uh, there was an applicant uh, who chose Nobel laureate as a supervisor. Uh, of course, uh, though I can say that it is impossible, but that is very, very difficult actually. Applicants should fully search for supervisor and department. I introduced some useful websites for that. Uh, for supervisor, uh, I recommend Sini, uh, C-I-N-I-I, uh, you can search uh, pieces and papers written by Japanese researchers on this site. Next, uh, research map. Uh, you can search researchers from name or fields. And then next, for searching universities and uh, department, um, there is a website called Study in Japan by JASO, J-A-S-S-O. Um, which itself has a lot of information for studying in Japan. So oh, I would like everyone to see it. Uh, so, and uh, you can download uh, an Excel file called uh, school, school Search. Uh, I will omit the details of how to use it, but you can find the department that uh, you can complete in English. So please try it. Uh, next, uh, Japan, Japan Study Support. You can get more information about universities and departments on this site. Please try this one too. Uh, explanation of research is over. Next, undergraduate. But uh, the process of recruitment for uh, undergraduate College of Technology, uh, Kosen, and uh, specialized training college is all, almost same. So I will explain it all together first. And then I will explain the differences individually. About uh, the three program process, at the end of April, we will start recruitment. In these three programs, uh, recruitment and selection are conducted by each region at five different technicians. Um, the five uh, in India. Uh, the five different technicians are uh, the embassy in, in Embassy Delhi and the consulate in Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai, and Bangalore. 
Uh, but uh, results from all the from the commissions uh, will be sum, summed up, and uh, we decide uh, we, we we will decide recommended candidates in India. After the application is closed, uh, the document screening will be conducted. The document screening is done by a score of CBSE or any other uh, common tests. After that. A written examination will be held uh, those, uh, for those who passed the document screening. And uh, an interview will be held uh, for on those who passed the written exam examination. But uh, about the detailed schedule, uh, I heard uh, that the schedule of CBSE in India uh, will be held from next, uh, May to June this year. Uh, so the schedule, uh, our schedule uh, has not uh, been fixed yet. We will notify in the, uh, the applicant uh, of the result of the first, section, first selection and at the end of uh, August. Finally, from December to January, uh, you will, uh, uh, applicant will be in, uh, in informed uh, the uh, final, final result. Uh, next selection method. Probably MLC will be able to recommend within around uh, 12 candidates of each program. But final successful candidates are chosen from the one with the best score in the candidates of all countries based on the writing test interview and the acting record, record uh, etc. So only applicants who have the possibility to pass final screening will be recommended by the MC. And writing test score is so important. Especially the weight of score of Japanese language is large. Because a student of three programs study in Japan by almost Japanese. So the person who want to apply these programs uh, please study Japanese well. And uh, students who have high Japanese skill can be directly enrolled to the school without preliminary education for, for Japanese language. Next, uh, uh, undergraduate. Um, there are two fields, uh, focus and uh, many majors. Uh, and course is uh, social, uh, social science AB and natural science AB. Uh, but uh, in the guideline of undergraduate is written about natural science C. Uh, but uh, this course is for uh, person who want to become medical doctors and dentist. Uh, but uh, these Japanese licenses are not valid in India. So no recruitments in this course are made from India. Mm. Um, the examination subject is different depending on the course. Uh, subject is uh, Japanese, English, mathematics, uh, or chemistry, or physics, or biology. And about uh, the interview, uh, we conduct for 40 minutes for one applicant. Next, about uh, College, of, College of Technology, we call it COSEN. And COSEN is a higher education uh, institu institution. Uh, and COSEN for uh, education programs to develop uh, hands-on engineers with world-class expertise and uh, the ability to handle the latest technology. There is a focus on lab work, uh, practical work, and hands-on exercise, as well as acquisition of advanced theoretical knowledge. They offer a comprehensive five-year program for junior high school graduates. Mexico ship students start from the third year of the, the College of Technology program, skipped their first and second years. Of course, one year preliminary education for Japanese language is conducted additionally. 
Um, this is fields of recruitment and uh, exam subject. Uh, exams, uh, exam subjects uh, are Japanese, English, mathematics, uh, physics, or chemistry. Um, the examination subject is different depending on the fields. Next, uh, specialized training college. Specialized training college is uh, offering post secondary courses are uh, called professional, professional training college. And uh, one of the uh, institution types classified, uh, classified as higher education institutions. Uh, these colleges uh, provide the know-how, technology, and skills useful in the, in one's future job and, li and life, as well as an improved education. Um, this is uh, field of recruitment and uh, exam subject. Uh, exam subject is Japanese, English, and mathematics. All of fields, same. Uh, Um, next, uh, I'd like to explain next year's schedules. Uh, I, I explained uh, some schedules, but uh, the schedule uh, and the methods of recruitment that uh, uh, I explained, but, uh, but uh, today, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, schedule and me methods may change significantly due to the impact of COVID-19. Last year, uh, recruit, recruitment was delayed uh, by around two months and the uh, written examination was not conducted. Uh, the next recruitment is pros proceeding as usual at, the, at this point, but um, there may be uh, changes. So please check the embassy's website carefully. Uh, finally, the uh, next scholarship is very competitive, so it may be difficult to be selected in it. If you seriously want to adapt, you have to be extremely prepared. But there are many other scholarships offered by universities, just or any other organizations. If you find the universities or supervisors in Japan, there are many ways to support you. Uh, other than uh, the Mexico scholarship, so please uh, don't give up and uh, try to realize it. I'm sure that uh, studying the, and researching in Japan offers an excellent experience and can become a great first step for your future career. Let's try. Uh, your best to do it. This is conclude my explanation. I hope uh, my story will help everyone. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Yonohara, uh, for your presentation and introducing us to the Max Scholarship. Uh, today, I would also like to mention that uh, both the facilitator and co-facilitator are, uh, are rep recipient of the Max Scholarship. So I, I, we could see that you give a very nice uh, overview of the Max Scholarship and the flow of how the students should approach uh, about in the scholarship. And thank you very much for uh, uh, your presentation. Uh, so would you like to tackle one of the questions that we have in the Q&A session? Uh, there's one question I would like to read, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, for the research student of the Max Scholarship, uh, if the research proposal and the reasons to be mentioned behind the motivation to study in Japan are all up to the mark, will the applicants assist to completing their bachelor's from a non-IIT or private university determines, uh, determined after the chance to getting selected for the scholarship? I think what uh, Mr. Dipro is asking is uh, the student from private uh, universities, would they have chances of getting uh, a max scholarship equal to the other universities like IIT? Mm. Mm. So the uh, eligibility of uh, apply, uh, eligibility to apply is uh, however uh, of a degree of 
undergraduate or master degree. So oh, we didn't uh, we didn't mind the university name. So oh, oh, all of all of uh, universities graduate uh, person and try to try to apply uh, this program. I think. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yana. So um, uh, I think uh, that uh, sorry, uh, but the uh, achievement uh, academic code is uh, a little important. Uh, if uh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a low score, uh, uh, we uh, if uh, if the applicant, uh, applicants uh, uh, low score applicants uh, make the good research ma uh, research plan. Uh, uh, but uh, it is difficult to recommend, recommend uh, maybe. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you, Mr. Yonehara, for your explanation. You uh, gave a very nice explanation to the question that I, we have been getting over the series of webinars. Uh, the uh, over the twelve webinars we have uh, uh, we have held, uh, we have question we had questions in all the webinars about the scholarships, and it was really nice to have your presentation in which you detailed about all the provisions and how to approach about the scholarships. And I think it's really helpful for students. Uh, this one more new question: uh, Would you like to take if we have uh, um, if I apply for max scholarship for undergraduate this year? Then will I be starting my university studies uh, the following year, that is 2022? This is one question from Mr. Abhishek. I think uh, the answer is obvious. If you're applying uh, this year, then you can only get your admission next year. Okay, uh, so there's one more question that is there any minimum CGPA requirement for MEXT? Is there any uh, particular value of uh, GPA uh, points uh, for the criteria of getting selected? Uh, Mr. Yonehara, you are on mute. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so for, for example, uh, I think over uh, 70% uh, of um, GAC GPA, uh, I think uh, no problem. But uh, under uh, under seventy uh, percent, uh, I, I need to I need to explain if I if I recommend uh, the applicant, uh, I need to explain more to mixed. So, so <laughs> yes. oh, I get. Uh, I, I'd like uh, over 70%, yes. I think. Thank you very much, Mr. Yanar, for your cooperation in the Q&A session. Uh, so that brings us uh, to the next uh, presentation. So I will share the screen again. Okay, uh, so now uh, we have completed our presentation by the Embassy of Japan. So our next presentation is uh, by uh, Mr. Yuji Nishikawa from Japan Science and Technology Agency. I would like to invite Mr. Yuji Nishikawa to please take over the proceedings. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, uh, I am Nishikawa from Japan Science and Technology Agency. I was uh, uh, in India for three, nearly three years. Uh, together with the University of Tokyo. So I'll say, uh, today I'm going to explain uh, invitation program to Japan. So maybe if you are interested to come to Japan, please uh, watch closely. Okay, uh, this program is called Sakura Science Plan or Sakura Science Program um, uh, implemented by JST. So uh, Japan Science and Technology is a, a research funding agency uh, like a Department of Science and Technology of India. We do uh, research funding and also human resource development in science and technology. Uh, GST comes right under Ministry of Education, MEXT. Uh, we do this uh, work under the, the direction of uh, supervision of MEXT. And then our uh, size of our GST is approximately 1.2 billion US dollars annual budget 
uh, our programs, very large program, uh, research uh, funding agency. And this is a, a India office. Uh, this is uh, located in South uh, Delhi, and we are working together with the University of Tokyo, uh, India office. Uh, we share uh, the same office. And the location of this office is just to the north, just uh, the north side of Deer Park, very close. And then uh, south of our office, there's IIT Delhi, also JNE, JNU is here, and the DST is also very close. So we're in a very convenient place, <coughs> we have our office. And uh, we have some joint research programs uh, with India, which I just uh, explained about India only. But of course, this office, uh, our JST India office, take care of all South Asian countries. So we have now uh, three uh, joint research programs uh, to, uh, with a combination of University of Tokyo, IIT Bombay University of Tokyo, IIT Hyderabad, Kyushu University, and IIT Delhi, all related to information uh, uh, technology, uh, internet uh, information, communication technologies. And this we have also, uh, oh, sorry. That previous program uh, was a, a joint program with Department of Science and Technology. So DST uh, uh, support uh, Indian researchers and JST support Japanese researchers. And then we have another program called the SATREPS. Uh, this is uh, now, this program is being done by JST and uh, uh, JICA, Japan International Ag uh, Cooperation Agency, who do the financing. And this particular program is being done by Nagoya Electric plus Nihon University and the Indian IIT Hyderabad. Uh, all these four projects, uh, term of project is four, five years, <clears throat> fairly large programs. And we have just added two, two more programs uh, with Nagoya University and then Indian side, IIT Kampur and the new design and research. And one more, University of Tokyo plus IIT Hyderabad, IIT Bombay, PT Terangana State Agricultural Universities. These programs, <coughs> uh, GST is uh, funding. And now we come to science program. This is a short time uh, invitation program. Short time is one maximum three weeks. Introductory intro, uh, invitation program to Japan. That means uh, for the first time visitor to Japan uh, they are uh, invited to Japan by this program. <clears throat> and then they uh, come to Japan to experience some, uh, to visit some Japanese uh, science uh, laboratories and so on, or universities, <clears throat> and then get to know about Japan. And then we now currently invite from uh, 41 countries, primarily uh, from Asia, plus some Latin American countries. <clears throat> And then uh, this program is divided into three components. Well, the major component is open application type program uh, of Sakura Science. <clears throat> uh, in this case, uh, uh, receiving or host organizations in Japan, that is high schools, universities, research institutes, private companies, NGO, NPOs, and other registered organizations, even government or non-government, <clears throat> they will become the, uh, they will apply as host organization to JST uh, for this for, uh, this program, and these two I'll explain later because these two uh, type two type three is handled by JST by uh, itself. The JST itself becomes the host organization, and then uh, age wise uh, above fifteen uh, that is comparable to class ten uh, in 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 Indian standard for example class 10, 11, 12. Uh, they become and above and then under 40, or 40 years of age below. <clears throat> and so they have to be very high uh, talented aspiring students or researchers uh, of, of this age range. And they have to be able to communicate in English. <clears throat> and most important thing is who have not stayed in Japan before <clears throat> because this program is meant for the first visitor to Japan. <clears throat> And there's an uh, open application type, a call for proposal. This, uh, uh, the process is called uh, this. Receiving organization in Japan submit proposal to JST uh, and the evaluation committee is uh, formed by JST and make evaluation and award, award of the programs. Uh, some of the awarded programs 
will be implemented by the host organization in Japan. <clears throat> Implementation uh, awarded receiving organization will be completed by middle of March. That is the end of each fiscal year <clears throat> because Japanese fiscal year starts at April and ends at, in March. I think in India it is the same. <clears throat> and then uh, funding of related uh, expenses will be refund, uh, uh, provided to the receiving organizations by JSP. <clears throat> So uh, these are some of the examples. <clears throat> this is of University of Tokyo, Tokyo for example, just a test example. University of Tokyo invited 10 computer science students uh, and some a faculty member and from IIT Delhi, Hyderabad, Kampur, and Madras during uh, June uh, 2019. And they, uh, they engaged in some short uh, joint research program together with, with the University of Tokyo. <clears throat> And these are the uh, ranking of, uh, of Japanese host universities uh, in terms of the number of MBTs, how many people they have invited. So number one is Miyazaki University. They have already, for the last six years, uh, invited uh, 757 people from outside. And Okayama University, Osaka University, Tokyo Metropolitan University, Shibara Institute of Technology, Kyushu University, Tokyo University. You know, all these are very uh, reputed universities of, of top universities of Japan. Uh, so please remember uh, the uh, names of these universities. And this is a total uh, summary. Uh, you know, in the this program started in 2014. And then uh, last year, uh, the 2020, we, there's nobody came to Japan because of this COVID-19. <clears throat> but uh, up, uh, for the last uh, six years, over 33,000 people have been invited uh, to Japan by this program. <clears throat> and number one country is from China, uh, uh, accounts for about one third of the total uh, MBTs. And then Thailand and India, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, Myanmar, and so on. So uh, I hope you know. Uh, I think a, a number of India uh, compared as compared with an in, in, a population of India, it should be come to at least uh, number two or even number one. So from India alone, uh, two thousand eight hundred forty-nine people have been invited by this program so far. And then uh, those who come to Japan by this program uh, will automatically join a Sakura Science Club, that is an alumni association. <clears throat> and uh, in, this just take care of, uh, I speak, talk about India. Uh, in case of India, uh, we had the first alumni, Sakura alumni in 2018 October uh, at the official residence of Japanese ambassador in New Delhi. <clears throat> and that time, uh, chief guest from India is uh, Professor uh, Dagaba, I'm sure uh, all people you know uh, about, he, he's uh, the top uh, scientific advisor uh, to India. <clears throat> and that time we chose uh, the coordinator uh, of Alumni uh, Association for India. And uh, Dr. Jitenda Chu, he's assistant professor of Aisa Pune. He is the uh, main coordinator, that is the president of the association, <clears throat> Alumni Association. And uh, now uh, these are the original member, uh, our, our uh, coordinator members, but now we have around 10 coordinators in for India. <clears throat> and second meeting was, uh, alumni meeting was held in 2020, uh, February, just uh, uh, before the COVID uh, uh, started. <clears throat> and so we are lucky enough uh, to have this in uh, the campus of IIT Delhi, <clears throat> and then ambassador also joined and uh, deliver this speech. And we had a, a kind of a poster session uh, was held at that time uh, I'm here right now. So, <clears throat> and then uh, Sri Lanka, yes, yes. We also had this uh, alumni meeting in Sri Lanka in 2019, February. So at that time, a National Science Foundation of Sri Lanka uh, was uh, uh, helped us quite a lot. So we are working very closely with NSF Sri Lanka for the alumni uh, activities uh, even now. So they are the great supporter of this program. And then uh, I just uh, show you, we, are, we have also alumni members in Japan. Uh, 
So we are we already formed uh, Japan Sakura Science As uh, Alumni Association, and then we are going to have an online meeting uh, here. So this is February, not February, March 6, this year, March 6, February. Uh, we are going to have a hold uh, this uh, Sakura uh, Science Alumni in Japan. So you can also uh, join. You can uh, just uh, Google uh, the registration uh, website. <coughs> And then uh, keynote speaker will be Dr. Mori, Wamoru Mori. He is the first official uh, 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 astronaut of Japan, Japanese astronaut. He went to the space uh, from Japan. And then also uh, some uh, guest speakers. Uh, he's from India, he's from, uh, uh, he's from uh, Vietnam, <coughs> from various countries. This will be, uh, will be organized soon. So please, I think you can also join. <coughs> If you are interested. And then uh, this program is very much valued. I uh, appreciate it by, uh, for example, in, in India, uh, by each government, but especially for the India, in case of India, uh, Japanese Prime Minister and Indian Prime Minister meets every year, uh, and every other year, uh, I should say every year, visit uh, vice versa. And then uh, at that time, a uh, joint statement is issued. And then in each joint statement, always uh, this our Sakura Science program is mentioned so far. And then uh, last year, we had last year, November 10, uh, last year, we had a joint, uh, this is official government to government uh, uh, science committee, joint uh, committee on science and technology was held uh, online <coughs> between Japan and India. And this uh, government uh, G2G meeting, also Sakura science program was mentioned, very uh, highlighted. So uh, for those who want to come to Japan uh, by this program, ah, so I should say, uh, I, I mentioned, uh, forgot to mention, this pro by this program, almost 100% of the expenses, uh, related expenses will be covered by this program. So uh, visitors to Japan uh, do not have to pay uh, anything uh, after he, he fly, I mean, uh, jump on the airplane. So, but uh, the, if in order to get uh, this uh, 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 program, sending organization in India, that is universities or schools or research institutes, uh, those organizations in India have to find a receiving host organization in Japan because uh, host organizations in Japan uh, only can make application, not the sending organization. So, always sending organizations have to make uh, their best effort to find and tie up with the best host organizations in Japan. Then uh, if they apply and uh, you may have a chance to Japan. So we are uh, waiting for you to come to Japan. And then if you are after coming, visiting Japan and if you are interested, please uh, study or work in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nishikawa, for your presentation and informing us about the uh, high profile GST program and uh, Sakura Science program. Uh, so that brings us to the end of today's webinar. And uh, today's webinar, I must tell you, is a very diverse uh, webinar in which uh, we had presentation by a public university, a private university, an international school, Embassy of Japan, and by GST. So thank you for uh, to all the panelists for giving your presentation and giving uh, an, uh, a view and uh, a comprehensive insight into the overall picture of the education system in Japan. Uh, and uh, as this is the last webinar in the series of webinar for the year 2021, so I would also like to uh, inform that uh, the other webinars uh, that were held before uh, from webinar 1 to webinar 11 are available uh, in the University of Tokyo India office website. So I would highly recommend the attendees to also go through the other webinars as you might find the information that is that you require in the other webinars as uh, uh, Mr. Miyauchi has worked uh, really hard to bring together 30 different universities together in this platform and uh, who provided all the information. So again, thank you very much uh, and uh, for uh, today's uh, for to all the panelists and all the attendees for today's webinar. And uh, the, I think that concludes our webinar today. Thank you.